All right, hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And I'm hoping today I can give you some great information on an all new bike from Be Cool Bikes. This is the 2022 B Challenger. Now, full disclosure, this bike is here courtesy of Be Cool. I did not purchase the bike. They sent me the bike so I could ride and test and share my ride experience with all of you on YouTube. So that's what we're gonna do today. Hopefully give you some great information, maybe help you to decide if the Challenger is the bike you're looking for. All right, now I'm gonna hit you with all the basic stats on this bike right up front. Then we'll take a look at it closer later, but you ready? Here we go. So this is a 24 by four fat tire bike, 750 watt rear hub motor, a 30, 48 volt, 30, amp hour battery pack, huge battery pack, dual suspension, hydraulic disc brakes, color screen, headlight, tail light, brake light, turn signals both front and back, uh, twist throttle, 48 tooth front chain ring. The seat height is 32 inches, so very accessible. The bike has seven mechanical gears. The payload capacity is 350 pounds. The bike itself weighs 98 pounds, and I'll put the current price on the screen. So now that you know all the basic specs, we can start taking a more detailed look at this bike up close. I know it's hard to tell from the pictures online, so I'll show you everything front to back up close on the bike. We can talk a little bit about the performance, you know, the top speeds and the hill climb power. And then at the end, I'll kind of try to wrap things up and tell you what I think the average e-bike consumer might need to know if you're considering the B Challenger. So let's get going. All right, everyone, this is the B Challenger from Be Cool Bikes. And this is one of two new models they have that are more of the moped style e-bike. They've got this one, and they've also got one called the Rambler coming out. This is the Challenger bike. It comes in various color options, so and they're all kind of a different combination of black and red. So I got the red frame with the black tank and a brown seat. You can also get a red tank, black frame, and black seat, or I think you can get black on black as well. So a couple different color options for you to pick from. And another option that they offer on this bike is you can also get it with a thousand watt rear hub motor. I got the 750 watt, so that's what we tested. Now, right off the bat, the very first thing I can tell you is this does not feel like a bicycle when you ride it. It really gives you the feeling of, I mean, it almost felt like a, a low speed, lightweight, cruiser style motorcycle riding it around. I didn't find myself pedaling a whole lot on this bike. It's really, with the seating position, it's really not set up to input a lot of power into the pedals. And I think most people that get this are probably just gonna ride it around throttle only. And I'm guessing that's why they give you this massive 30 amp hour battery pack that's inside this uh, you know, fake plastic tank here. I mean, it really does look like a little motorcycle. So I got a feeling that's the crowd they're going for. You know, Not so much someone that's gonna buy an e-bike for exercise or to ride as a bicycle, someone that's gonna buy the e-bike to cruise around town throttle only. That's definitely the feeling I got from the Challenger bike. But let me start showing you some of the parts up close so you can get a good look here. The uh, tire, so 24 by four inch fat tires, pretty aggressive tread on there. It is a quick release on the front wheel. And if you spin around this side, you'll see it does have the 180 millimeter disc brakes. They are hydraulic brakes. They felt great, actually. These brakes were awesome. I don't know what brand they are, but they worked really, really good. No issue with the stopping power. Really didn't make a whole lot of noise or anything. So really good set of brakes on this bike. And the front forks, so you got front suspension on the bike. And the forks are inverted. They're, they're upside down front forks. Normally this would be at the top. And they, I mean, they provide a pretty good amount of squish. They weren't really stiff. There is no adjustment on these forks. There's no knobs up here. I did take this cap off that's on top of the fork. There's nothing underneath it. So really no adjustment in the front forks at all. But, you know, around town, they felt great. If you were, I mean, I wouldn't be jumping this or seriously off-roading this bike. You might want to switch those out. But for around town, they were perfectly fine. Now, one thing I'll point out on the forks is they've got this rubber stopper here on the forks that protects your gas tank, <laughs> your, your fake gas tank where your battery is. So when you fully lock out the steering, that hits on the tank instead of the, the metal fork. So hopefully protect this from getting scratched or even cracked. And uh, I had to adjust these a little bit. This piece that juts out was kind of tilted more this way. So I was hitting in the tank when I you know, fully locked the steering. It's kind of limiting my steering radius. And uh, I angled this so now that it it hits a little bit, it's got a little bit more turning radius. And after that, it was fine. This bike does not turn really, really sharp though. That's one thing to note about it is it's not really set up to make really tight turns. So if you're planning on doing some really tight off-roading, you might have a difficult time on this bike doing that. But around town, it was perfectly fine. The fork does have a really cool look to it. I mean, it looks like a set of motorcycle front forks on there. And also what looks like a 
motorcycle equipment is this headlight, this really cool LED headlight that's on this, complete with, you've got, you know, turn signals here, separate turn signals on the front of the bike, which is really awesome. I have not had a bike yet with front turn signals on it. So that's cool. And you've got turn signals in the back too. On the back, the turn signals just kind of integrated into the taillight. It's the bottom of the taillight. So there's no separate turn signals on the back, but you do have turn signals all the way around this cool motorcycle looking style headlight. You, you have to assemble this part of it when the bike arrives, but it's not hard at all to put it together. And it just clips on to the forks with these metal brackets. And you can Position these wherever you want. I have the headlight set really low. I mean, you could slide this all the way up to here and have the headlight sitting much higher if you wanted. I just thought it looked good having it low like that. So a lot of adjustability here as far as where you want your lighting. Now, if we come up to the handlebars, so the handlebars are 28 inches wide. They're nice and wide, and they've got this really tall piece that comes up here. So they sit nice and high. It's a really comfortable seating position on this bike. I can throw up some videos of me uh, riding this so you can see how you sit i mean it really feels like a cruiser motorcycle when you're riding it your hands are up nice and high the seat's pretty low it's a laid back comfy cruiser style setup i really enjoyed the seating position a lot on this bike so the handlebars come up nice and high and i want to show you this one other thing too i usually put bar and mirrors on all of my bikes and when i tried to put them on this bike they didn't fit because this opening is a little bit different width than normal so if i put that in there it says 13.1 millimeters so if you want to buy bar and mirrors for this bike maybe that'll help you out the challenger has leather wrapped grips with the palm rest and it's a twist throttle on your right hand which is fantastic i think all bikes should be that way right you could always change it out if you didn't like it but who doesn't like the twist there seven speed shifter here again the brakes felt really great you can lock up the wheels anytime you want on this side is all your controls your menu buttons to program your display and shift through the menus and everything and then your turn signals and the horn over here and it's probably one of the loudest horns i've ever heard i'm going to turn this on and i'll hit the horn for you uh, but i'm going to turn the audio way down in my editing so here we go that was super loud <laughs> it's almost like a car horn or a motorcycle horn it's a really loud horn it's built right into the bottom of the headlight so you don't even see it but that's that's pretty cool. I mean, this is, that's a good horn. If you're going to ride this in traffic, people will definitely be able to hear that. I don't, I wouldn't want to use it on a, a bike trail or the greenway path, but uh, for around town, great horn. And this is what the display looks like. It's a full color display. Same one that they used on the uh, Pathfinder bike from Be Cool. It's a really good looking display. It gives you all kinds of information, your battery voltage and speed and time and distance and trip meter and odometer. And uh, it also gives you the watt output, your pedal assist levels, power output indicators there's a lot going on, on this screen but it is really nice to look at and it is very colorful screen as well um, they if i go hit the menu button you can see it switched a few of the things there it gives you like your average speed max speed and it has a watt output meter there and i can tell you riding this bike around the watt output that it was showing uh you know when the throttle's full blast it was in the high 900s i think i saw it crack over a thousand watts a couple times so it's roughly in that thousand watt output on this bike as, as the peak. I believe it has a 22 amp controller and all the controller and everything is inside this, this panel here. You'd have to take four bolts out of here to probably drop this back piece out to get into the controller. But um, the Be Cool bikes all seem to use the same power delivery system here, same motors, same controllers or 22 amp controllers. For the battery pack on the Challenger, it's a 48 volt, 30 amp hour battery pack that's hidden behind this fake plastic gas tank. And there's a little seam that runs through here. This, so the, you know, this plastic tank is two parts. And then there's a bunch of little tiny screws right here that holds the thing together. It's like 16 of them. <laughs> Cause I did try to take this apart and look inside it and I just got, there was too many screws. I took out like 14 of them and there was still more under here I couldn't get to. I would have to take off these bolts and remove the whole thing. So. I guess that is an important thing to recognize about the Challenger bike, and that is that this battery is non-removable. You are not taking the battery off of the bike without completely dismantling this whole tank. So non-removable battery, that's important to know because you're going to want to store this bike somewhere where the battery is not going to be affected. So, you know, your garage or some kind of heated and cooled space is where this bike's going to have to live. You can't really let it sit outside in the weather at all. Not that I think it really anybody does that with their e-bike, but just know you can't take this battery off. I think that would be a cool 
uh, upgrade that be cool could do in the future maybe put some latches on this side and a couple hinges on the other and allow this tank to flop open so you could get to the battery and possibly take it out i know a lot of people like to remove the battery and take it in their house to charge so something to note here non-removable battery pack on the challenger bike it is a really cool looking design though i mean this thing really looks like a motorcycle right down to kind of a, a fake gas cap here on the top which I would like if they changed this to aluminum too. This is a sticker on here, but I mean, it looks pretty much like an old school gas tank on a motorcycle. It does stick out a little bit far. Your knees kind of rub against this a little bit as you pedal, but I mean, it was a very comfortable bike to ride. I'll give it that. And I don't really pedal a lot on this thing, honestly. I, I pretty much just rode it around throttle only. The frame on this bike is very beefy. I mean, this is a heavy duty frame on this thing. And the color in person is a little bit different than it looks online. I don't know if it'll come through on camera, but online it looks just bright red, like Ferrari red, and it's not. It's it's a deeper red in person, and it's got a little touch of a metallic tint to it. So I was actually really happy with the paint job when it showed up. It was a little bit different than I was expecting, a little bit deeper of a red, and with that metallic look to it as well. And you do have the other color options to choose from. If you didn't want the red frame, you could get a black frame instead. And it'd be really neat actually if they offered some kind of decals or pinstriping or design different design tanks. I mean, this is basically just flat, uh, or it's actually a gloss black plastic. It'd be neat if there was some different covers or something you could put over there and customize your ride, right? Maybe that's something they'll offer in the future. Now let's drop down here to look at the pedals. So it is a 48 tooth chain ring, double sided aluminum guard on there. Nice, I, I never ran out of pedal on this bike. I really appreciate that when they put a, a larger chain ring on the bike. Now, before I get too far along, I can already hear the questions about these openings in the frame. So let me spin around to the other side here. I'm gonna take a couple measurements for you just so you know how big these are. So let's go the height on this one on the bottom about six and a half, top to bottom on the angle there about mm, six and a half there so six and a half by six and a half inches on that uh bottom opening the top one if i go right at the top here it's about i'm gonna call it 11 across the top and then the width of it you're looking at about four ish so roughly i can see people trying to fashion some kind of bag or something that fits in here or honestly i think if you really wanted a serious upgrade you might be able to sneak like a a mid drive in there i'm not sure the dimensions of like a bbso2 motor but it you might be able to sneak that in there that'd be a really powerful upgrade this would be a really really cool bike to to deck out and to upgrade it would be a great platform to start with i think now let's take a look at the seat so the seats come in black or brown you can get either color and there's no springs in it or anything like that, but I mean, you got this massive spring right here. Look at this thing, this is huge. This is a really soft ride. Don't worry about springs in the seat. Um, great seat. You can see though, I, I did make one change to it because the seat kind of slopes down and then slopes back up and it gets narrower you know, as it goes down. I found myself wanting to sit up here on the wide part, but then you're kind of, kind of slipping down. So I put a couple extra washers in underneath this seat tab right here just to angle it up just a touch and i felt that was a little bit better of a ride position that was so super easy to do so you could make that change if you wanted as well it was a really comfortable seating position i didn't want to change anything about that at all really as long as you're not having to input hard into the pedals again this i felt like this was just a cruiser bike throttle only most of the time and at the back of the seat you've got this little tab right here that comes out it's you know welded right onto the frame comes out here there's a little bit of space right here on the top of it and then that's the mount to hold your tail light and i found myself the bike when you try to move it there's not a lot of good grab points to pick it up and move it around you know i, I was kind of grabbing here into the seat but you can only get your fingers under you don't really want to grab here because you don't want to risk breaking the tail light off but so it's i mean it's a heavy bike and it's not really easy to lift because there's not really a good lift point so if you're looking for a bike that's you can easily load and unload into your truck or car or on a rack or carry it up a flight of stairs or something. This one's not gonna be suited for that. And another thing you might be wondering is, you know, does the bike have a rear rack or can you put a rear rack on it? They don't sell a rear rack. I don't know how you would get a rear rack onto this bike short of just manufacturing it yourself. I mean, you've got this little tab right here that comes out from the frame that you could start you know, mounting something onto 
I don't know that a rear rack would really look good on this bike, honestly. I, what I would like to see, what, if I was gonna make something for this bike, it would be just a bracket system that came off of this frame here to hold saddlebags. I think that would look cool if you had color matched, just, you know, 12 inch by 12 inch saddlebags to go on this bike, because then you're really getting that motorcycle feel out of it. That's what I think would look and match the design of this bike. So it'd be, that'd be really cool if they could offer that. Instead of a rack, a bracket to hold leather saddlebags on this bike, but there is no rear rack for it. There is no front rack mounting bolts or anything up here. So it's not really set up to carry a lot of cargo with you on this one. All right, now let's take a look at the rear suspension. I know everyone's been dying for me to get to this part because this is just one of the standout features on this bike. I mean, it's such a cool look. You got this massive spring here and this air reservoir. I mean, it's a, so it's a spring and it's also an air shock. I'll try to get a camera shot under here for you. So there's a little, you know, air compressor nozzle thing there. I did put my uh, air suspension pump that I have on there and pumped air into it. So it is an air shock. I was surprised to see that it was actually a functioning air shock. Uh, but this suspension, I mean, it rides like a dream. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. I tried to take a clip of it so you can see just how, uh, you know, spongy it is. I mean, you can, and you can dial it up stiffer too if you want. And there's, you know, one of these shocks on each side. So you got the dual suspension there in the back. Really a cool, cool look on this bike. It's just, I mean, the more and more you look at the features of it, the more and more it just feels more like a motorcycle than it does a bicycle. And I'll try to get a couple different angles of close-ups here. I know people were really interested in this rear suspension. And again, the weight capacity on the bike, they say payload capacity of 350 pounds. This right here is not a dial or knob or anything. That's just, I guess, design element. But very cool, very cool rear suspension on this bike. Very comfortable bike. And at the back of the bike, you've got the Shimano Torni derailleur system and your 750 watt continuous rear hub motor which uh, peaks you know right around a thousand ish watts right around there and again they do offer this bike in a thousand watt version as well note according to my contact at be cool the thousand watt version of the challenger bike will use a larger 28 amp controller and could reach maximum speeds of up to 32 miles an hour using the throttle however with that larger power delivery you can expect to see a slight drop in the bike's range the version I tested in this video was the 750 watt Challenger. Now let's talk about performance on the Challenger bike. So I took it out and ran it up to top speed on throttle only on a long straight stretch. It made it up to about 28, 29 miles an hour on throttle only. So really strong. If you add in pedaling, I think it bumped it up another mile an hour or so. I think I got up to about 30 miles an hour while pedaling. Now on the hill climb test, Challenger made it up the hill just fine. Certainly wasn't the fastest bike ever going up the hill. I mean, we've got a 750 watt motor that's you know, pulling this 98 pound bike, a very heavy bike up the hill. So it made it up the hill just fine under throttle power only. I would suggest that, you know, if you live in a very, very mountainous hilly area, this might not be the right bike for that because you can't input into the pedals a whole lot if you're on a really steep hill. But if you live in a place that's mostly flat or has moderate hills, I think you'd be just fine on this one. Another thing you might be curious about is can you take this bike off road? And I would say yes, to an extent. I did take the bike on some trails a very comfortable ride on the trails. It, it looks like it's at home on the trails. I think if you're gonna be on uh, nice wide bike trails or forestry roads, you'd be perfectly fine on this bike. Where it's gonna be difficult is if you're in any kind of scenario where you have to climb you know, really short, steep hills. That makes it tough because you can't really input a lot into the pedals to get up those. The other thing is if you're on tight trails with a lot of switchbacks, it doesn't have a really tight turning radius. So that might be a challenge. And if you would all have to lift the bike over uh, logs or, or whatever that that's gonna be tough too because it's like I said it's 98 pounds and there's not a whole lot of good lifting points on the bike so I think the Challenger bike has a lot of good things going for it I mean it's a very accessible bike with the low seat height it's a very comfortable bike with the seating position and the rear suspension it was a dream riding this bike um, it had good range I forgot to mention range I did a range test on this bike and on that 30 amp hour battery pack I was able to get 42 miles throttle only so throttle only, no pedaling. It carried me 42 miles before it cut out. I thought it was gonna go a little bit further than that actually, but there might be a couple factors that factored in. Number one is just, you know, the extra weight of this bike. And then also two, that was only like the second time I charged the battery. So I didn't, I didn't properly balance the battery like you're supposed to do where you ride it and then charge it for 12 hours and then ride it and charge it for two hours. I didn't do anything like that. So I, I did that range test on my second charge 
basically. So if you properly balance that battery, maybe you get a little bit further distance out of it. Range is so wildly dependent upon, you know, using the throttle and the terrain and the hills and your weight. So, but that gives you a rough estimate. I was able to get 42 miles out of it throttle only and I weigh 180 pounds. The other thing this bike has going for it is just the look, man, the styling. It's just so unique looking. I haven't seen anything else like it. It is a really sharp, cool looking bike. So I think it's gonna sell a lot just based on the styling and people that wanna grab this thing and just start customizing it. And I of course had Mrs. Citizen try the Challenger bike on for size. She's five foot three, was able to get on the bike easily, could get her feet down on the ground. She did say that if she was gonna ride this bike, she would wanna be wearing shoes that had a little bit of a heel in them so she can get her feet comfortably down to the ground. She felt comfortable enough to even take it for a spin around the block, not something that she does on every single bike I bring home, but she took this one for a ride. For her, the confidence level on a bike is all about can she get her feet down to the ground and also the power delivery. Be Cool has a really smooth power delivery. It's not twitchy at all, and that's what she likes. All right, so what does the average person need to know about the Challenger bike? Well, I can think of a couple things I learned while riding it. Number one, I've said it a million times, is a heavy bike, 98 pounds, so keep that in mind. The second thing is, it does not feel like a bicycle when you're riding. It feels more like a low speed motorcycle, honestly. So I, I, mean, I wouldn't buy this for exercise or if you really want something that feels more like a bicycle, this feels more like the motorcycle moped feeling. So that's what you're going for. Challenge would be great for that. Next, I'll say the seating position was extremely comfortable, really comfortable bike to ride, but that means it's not really that easy to pedal. It was hard to push on the pedals and get a lot of input into that. So if you're looking to pedal a lot, Mm, maybe not the Challenger, but if you just want to cruise and ride and have fun, definitely consider the Challenger. Now, because of that seating position where it's not set up to pedal a whole lot and it doesn't really feel like a bicycle and it looks more like a motorcycle and a moped, I think you need to consider where you're going to be riding the bike. If you're out on the bike trails in the greenways, you might get some second looks. You may have to give people a little courtesy pedal so they know that you're on an actual bicycle. I didn't really take it on the greenways a whole lot. I tried to stick mainly to the side streets on the bike. That's where I felt most comfortable on it and uh, I don't know, I kind of feel like that's where it was going to be used the most. Next I'll say if you live in a place that's really, really hilly, steep hills, this thing's probably going to struggle. It was fine on the moderate hills around here for me. I didn't have any issues with it, but if you have a really mountainous terrain where you live, you're going to find the limits of this bike probably pretty quick. And the last thing I'll point out is remember that is a non-removable battery. So you're going to have to charge this bike wherever you decide to park it. And that is all the info I have for you today on the Challenger bike from Be Cool. I will of course link this bike in the description below so you can find it easily. I'll also link Be Cool's website so you can find that. Thank you to Be Cool for getting me out on this bike for riding and testing and to share all my experiences on the bike with all of you. And if I, if I miss something, if there is a question I didn't answer for you, put it in the comments. I will do my best to answer. I hope you found the video helpful, informative. If you did, consider hitting that subscribe button. And I think that's all for today. So thank you so much for watching.